Praise be Jesus and Mary, now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. John, the Apostle, who wrote his gospel to persuade people to believe in Jesus. And in order to achieve this purpose, John, in his gospel, relates a series of signs and miracles which manifest the glory and divinity of Christ. Today's gospel reading is an account of the first of these signs. At a wedding feast in a town called Cana in Galilee, Jesus turns water into wine. This miracle manifested his glory, and his disciples who were present there believed in him. We do not know the identity of the young couple that had just been married, but it seems very likely that Mary was very close to them. Hence, we are told that she was present at the wedding. And because she was very close to the couple, Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. We notice that Mary is not called by name. Instead, she is introduced as the mother of Jesus. And in fact, Throughout the Gospel of St. John, Mary is referred to always and only as the mother of Jesus and never by name. Why is this? St. John wants us to understand Mary's role in relation to Jesus. She is the mother of him who is the Son of God himself. As such, Mary plays a most important role in the story of salvation. Mary is called the mother of Jesus. The name Jesus means Savior. So Mary is the mother of the Savior, the mother of the Redeemer. At the wedding feast, the wine runs out. And what does the mother of Jesus do? She says to her son, they have no wine. For the Jewish people, wine is a symbol of joy. In fact, they have a saying which goes like this, where there is no wine, there is no joy. The lack of wine would have been a source of great humiliation and bitterness for the young spouses. Perhaps the young spouses themselves did not know they were running out of wine. But the mother of Jesus did not miss the tragedy that was about to happen. And so she says to her son, they have no wine. If wine is a symbol of joy, then turning to Jesus through Mary, the newlyweds found true joy that surpasses all other joy. After Jesus worked the miracle and the master of the feast tasted the new wine, he called the bridegroom to himself and said, everyone serves the good wine first, and when people have drunk freely, then the poor wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. That good wine is a symbol of the true joy which Christ gives to the soul. We possess true spiritual joy when we possess Christ in our hearts. The wine of joy runs out when we lose Jesus, when we lose his grace and friendship, especially when we commit mortal sin. But also, we do not possess true joy if we do not know Jesus or recognize his presence in the daily events of our lives. We should never think that God is not interested in the ordinary details of our life. He is there, present, just as he was present 
at this wedding feast in Canaan. Our lives are filled with joy, especially when we live it with him. Mary, the mother of Jesus, notices that the young couple had no, no more wine, and she took the initiative by going to Jesus to ask for help. In the same way, Mary exercises the same maternal solicitude toward us. She takes care of us. She knows our every need, and she knows what it is that will make us happy. Recently, we, the friars, we've been having a discussion about the apparitions of Our Lady at Guadalupe. And this discussion reminded me of the words of Our Lady to Juan Diego when one day he tried to avoid her because he was preoccupied about the health of his uncle. His uncle was dying. And in order to take care of his uncle, he was traveling to another city to get, I mean, I think to get the last rites for his uncle. And on the way, he was supposed to meet Our Lady on top of the hill. But he tried to avoid that. He tried to go by another way in order not to meet Our Lady. Instead, Our Lady goes to meet him, blocks him, and says to him, Hear and let it penetrate your heart, my dear little son. Let nothing discourage you, nothing depress you. Am I not here who am your mother? Are you not under my shadow and protection? Am I not your fountain of life? Are you not in the folds of my mantle? and the crossing of my arms? Is there anything else you need? Do not fear any illness or vexation, anxiety or pain. Let not the illness of your uncle afflict you because he is not going to die now of what he has in himself. Be sure that he will get well. And indeed, the uncle became well again. These words of Our Lady to Juan Diego are very powerful. They manifest to us Our Lady's compassion and care for each and every one of us. She is the mother of Jesus, yes, but she is also our mother. She cares for our every need. She is the source of our joy. At Cana, Mary, through a maternal mediation, brought joy to the young spouses. Mary continues to exercise the same maternal solicitude toward every Christian soul espoused to, to Christ. She makes sure that we will never run out of wine, which is sanctifying grace. And if we ever have the misfortune of losing sanctifying grace as a result of mortal sin, she will always lead us back to Jesus, the fountain of life. All she asks is that we do whatever he tells you. As our mother, Mary is attentive to our needs. She knows when we are running out of wine when we are in danger of losing Jesus. And even before we turn to her in prayer, she is already interceding on our behalf before Jesus, her son. Which is why it is important that we should have some form of devotion to Mary, at least as a sign of gratitude for the many graces she obtains for us before God. Sometimes, when we turn to God in prayer, he doesn't immediately answer, or he answers in his own way. This can be discouraging and make us lose confidence. We lose hope. Mary teaches us what it means to be confident in prayer. Mary was confident that Jesus would grant her request. 
But that kind of confident prayer requires obedience to God's will. Sometimes, in order to heal us, in order to fill us with spiritual joy, God can make a few demands that we find difficult to understand. For example, something as simple as going to confess your sin to a priest can be very difficult for some people today. But this just requires a simple act of humility and in return, God fills us with spiritual joy. So let us remember the words of Mary, do whatever he tells you. The Virgin Mary was confident that the Lord Jesus Christ would hear and answer her request. But confidence presupposes obedience. May we be confident in bringing our own needs to God and those of the people known to us and loved by us. May we ask the Virgin Mary to intercede on our behalf, but may we also be obedient so that in doing the will of God, as Mary tells us to, we may always possess true joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.